Well, the U.S.-Mexico border, over 1,500 miles of desert, rivers, ravines, and more. Building a wall across it has been a central promise of President Trump, but the president hasn't gotten his wall yet amidst backlash, lack of funding, and, of course, the fact that it would be a logistical nightmare. If Palmer Lucky, the man who founded the VR startup Oculus, has his way, he will give the president a wall, albeit a virtual one. His company, Andural Industries, is trying to sell the government on using virtual reality as a solution to stopping people from illegally crossing the border. My next guest got an upfront look at Andural and its new technology, wrote about it as part of his upcoming cover story for Wired magazine. Stephen Levy, Wired's editor-at-large, joins us from St Seattle. Stephen, always great to have you here on the show. So. You visited the border with Palmer Lucky. You put on the headset. Describe the experience for me and how this technology works. Okay, first of all, the, the conditions for this were chosen because this was a place on the border where it's really difficult to have any security. It was a very remote area. There's not many uh, border patrol officers who can get there in, in a hurry. And the rancher whose land it is uh, told me that people just walk on with impunity and there's been gun battles on his land and he's very frustrated. Uh, this uh, Andrew Industries uses low-cost, off-the-shelf technology and they power it with AI and uh, some virtual reality as an option, but you could do it without it. They put up these low-cost towers. They could see for miles, literally, and detect what's happening uh, in the territory where people would be crossing the border. And it can distinguish between uh, a cow and a person, say. So... It's an incredibly harsh environment, as I mentioned, wire-eating bugs, fierce winds, deep ravines. Every attempt to use technology at the border has basically failed. What makes you think this can succeed? The problem with it before was that, for one thing, the technology wasn't there yet. You didn't have the low-cost centers, sensors, and uh, really efficient AI that you have now. And Andrew has used some it's an innovative technology. They've come up with a way to basically take a flash picture uh, a mile away by using a laser, and then again using their thrifty. Uh, methodology, they took it from a hair removal uh, product. So they, they just repurposed a 600 watt laser to do that so they can come up with it uh, pretty cheaply. And in so, the few, few weeks it was do, the, done, it caught 55 people. So how efficient is it though, given that you still need officers and, and, and humans to catch these people, essentially? I guess they're uh, strategy is to say we don't have to do it all you don't have to have automated robots to actually catch the people uh, in the ter terrain like this where it takes a few miles to cross and then you have to go a number of miles to go to the next highway there's time to give a couple, few hours to border patrol people to take say a helicopter to get there um, and this is only the beginning of Andrew's plans they see the border as a way to open up uh, they're getting contracts for what they call the battlefield of future. Uh, so their ultimate goal is to sell to the Department of Defense and become a defense company using Silicon Valley technology. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention this, the stories we've been hearing of the hundreds of migrant children in these holding centers who have been ripped away from their families as part of this new uh, Trump immigration policy to prosecute border crossers and separate them from their children. You know, where are the families in all of this? Well, the families are essentially not part of the annual thought process. They are fulfilling what the government wants done. They're not getting involved in the politics. And I point out in the story that what we've learned over the last year uh, and earlier, but especially over the last year, is that technology is politics. So uh, as much as Andrew says they're doing a job and they're, they consider themselves patriots doing work for the government, uh, that you can't do this without dealing in some way with the implications of your technology. On that note, we have to talk a little bit about Palmer Lucky and his, his political views are antithetical to what most of Silicon Valley preaches. You know, he, he left Facebook in the midst of a lot of controversy after Mark Zuckerberg bought his company for $2 billion. Tell us a little bit more about him. This, is, this company is now only a year old, but, you know, talk to us about, you know, what's next. Right. Well, Palmer is a very interesting figure. He's only 25 years old. He started this company, as you mentioned, at uh, Oculus as a teenager. It got bought for a huge amount of money from Facebook. And I, I don't think he'd fit in well 
at Facebook. And I think maybe it was less of a politics thing, and Facebook insists that uh, they didn't fire him because of his politics, than you know, be, that he just wasn't a match. Facebook has a lot of people who come from Ivy League schools. Palmer was homeschooled and then went to uh, a community college in you know, uh, Southern California. Um, and, uh, and I think the politics might have been a factor in his not fitting in, but I don't think, it, I believe Mark Zuckerberg to say it wasn't politics which fired him. Um, he is uh, an upfront supporter of the Republican Party, but he told me that uh, he is not a member of the alt-right. <laughs> Curious, since you are, of course, writing a book on Facebook, I just got back from E3, you know, the biggest video game conference in the world. You know, Facebook had a presence there, but, you know, we, we were asking the question, is VR dead? I had CEOs telling me this is still a $0 billion business. Do you think that Facebook buying Oculus for $2 billion, especially given the fallout, was a mistake? Well, they... They bought Oculus for a very long-term vision, which was to say in 10 years, uh, virtual reality might be the platform of the future. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg still believes that could be the case. But I think if it doesn't work out that way, I don't think he's going to regret it because you know their strategy is to look to the next thing and make sure that they're not cut off of the past by a new paradigm coming along and like like mobile came along and and not being ahead of the game. So if it isn't VR, maybe it's blockchain. And guess what? Facebook is now working on the blockchain. So I think that anything that looms as the possible next platform, Facebook is going to be there.